Well, praise the Lord. I pass this time for questions and answers to call in. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. So uh, we are ready for questions and answers. You can post in the chat uh, your questions. You can also unmute yourself to ask Pastor directly. Amen. So the uh, uh, title of the sermon today can be like the importance of the works of Jesus. And we know how important it is. Hmm. And like all things in the Bible, just because we see it, we believe it. It might not come overnight, but we must believe it and pray into it. In all our prayers, we must pray to understand that signs and wonders should be our norm and not exceptional. We must believe that we are to live and breathe and exist in that same power that Jesus had. And in this silence, we want to uh, emphasize the fact that in our thinking, we must think about the fact and renew our mind that, yes, the power of God is upon us 24 hours. And in any time and situation, we need it, the family needs it, people around need it, we can demonstrate it by the grace of God. Amen. You see, what is the questions on the chat? So thank you for today's teaching. I have a question. Why then did the Jews even doubt Jesus after he resurrected uh, Jesus, uh, Lazarus from the dead, even when they knew without a doubt that Lazarus was really dead and decomposing already? Good question. The thing about uh, human beings is that what they believe is still their free choice. And sometimes, like Jesus, you can demonstrate everything under the sun, even miracles. They knew Jesus did it. And yet they say, uh, he's a sinner. And Jesus said he was son of God. And they say, you should not say you're son of God, that's blasphemy. Jesus demonstrated that he was a Messiah, and they said, no, the Messiah should be born in Bethlehem. They didn't even bother to check the facts. I have confronted people like that. When they choose to believe the wrong thing, even if it's irrational, illogical, their anger, their fury, their emotions can still stuck to them. And they choose to believe what was totally wrong. When people choose to believe, it blinds them. Like Jesus said, uh, the blind has their eyes open, and those who claim to see, they were blind because they cannot see. And it doesn't show anything about Jesus, but it shows the standard of unbelief that people can yield to. It's in front of their eyes and they don't believe it. It's the words that Jesus actually said and they still don't believe it. They can see the resurrection being done of Lazarus and they still could not believe. But of course, there were many that believed. Many who didn't believe suddenly believed because of Lazarus. But they're still Jews so stubborn 
that if a person who resurrected stand in front of them, they can see, see. No, I don't believe, I don't believe. And there are such people today. And the miracles in front of their eyes, uh, some wonderful thing that has been done, and they still say they choose not to believe. It just shows how demonic people can become. That's why Jesus said um, that he marveled at their unbelief. That, uh, yes. That even if these miracles were done, you know, with uh, some yes. other place, you know, they were so them and go more right. Say they will repent. <laughs> yeah, but in this time and age, uh, we we are again seeing such kind of unbelief. You know, where even mm. uh, I mean myself, I I have encountered people who. Uh, can tell me in my face that um, uh, certain historical event, maybe they said uh, uh, September 11, you know, the uh, it never happened, you know. Uh, <laughs> yes. And the moon landing, they also say it never happened. Or they tell me the earth is square, you know, or what, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so, I um, mean, uh, we have people in your face telling you that they do believe that this thing has happened. So if a miracle is performed also in front of their eyes, their unbelief is could be so strong that they will say that no, it didn't happen or they don't believe or they find some other um, reasoning. That is unfortunately true. You know the people who believe in the flat earth? When you see even uh, uh, rockets that bring tourists to the earth, uh, to the space, when they reach a certain height and they look down, you can see the curvature of the earth. But still there are people who believe in the flat earth. Sadly, some of them are actually Christians. You know, when you look at the interview, mm -hmm. some of them are Christians and they don't believe in a round earth. A spear. It's a flat earth. <laughs> in front of their eyes, from the uh, from the land, from the window of the space, uh, not even reaching the space station, even just over the earth, you can see the earth is curved. Mm. They still don't believe. Mm. Well, thank God that the Bible is our, our uh, main foundation for our belief. And what Jesus said about us, about the works, and what we should be, it remains true. Mm -hmm. And I believe in a short time, He will send us forth to demonstrate that signs and wonders are part and parcel of the kingdom of God and should be normal for us. Amen. So, Pastor, when Jesus said, uh, pray that um, for laborers to go and harvest, the laborers have to be with signs and wonders. Yes, then, send forth. Then we can do what uh, we are called to do. Amen. Mm. I pray that today's understanding will renew our heart and mind. We begin to think in a different way every day about signs and wonders. Mm. Amen. Says here, and next question. Sir, Matthew seven twenty nine. he taught them uh, as one having authority and not as scribes. What does that mean? That means that when Jesus spoke, he spoke of things as if it was true and that he understand it to be true. And not like human beings who when you make a statement, an argument, you 
have to try to defend it in different ways. Jesus doesn't defend, he just speaks the truth. And it is in the truth. Uh, whenever you write a dissertation or a, a thesis, uh, you cannot just say things. It's a different ball game. Whatever you say, you have to back up with what other people say, and the more the, the more the merrier. So uh, you cannot just state it as an authority. Uh, but Jesus, he state things as authority because he knew all things. And he doesn't need to defend or prove it. Um, when he spoke about uh, the Lazarus who died, rich man and poor man, he stated that as a fact. Like he knew it. He doesn't have to defend, oh, there's a chasm between the two, oh, this is where, you know, there's one part hell that looked like that, like this. He just stated it. And every time Jesus speak, it was the truth. That's what it means. Hmm. Pastor, um, Jesus, it's written that Jesus came in grace and truth. And the Holy Spirit is also called the Spirit of Truth. Mm -hmm. um, so when we receive the Word of God uh, and people uh, preach the Gospel, uh, the Holy Spirit brings forth uh, the witness of truth in their hearts. And um, there is this like a, warm, a kind of warming of the Heart, yes. Uh, kind of feeling also that sometimes we, we can have, um, uh, even like I mean, just now when I prepare the the scriptures, you know, I can feel that kind of, uh, warming in the heart. Um, so, yes. says, so when um, uh, these people who have unbelief, why is it not that, the conviction of the Holy Spirit and the witness of the Spirit of Truth. Uh, not able to pierce through uh, in their heart. Because sometimes we even see hardened criminals and uh, a very uh, bad, uh, so-called bad people, they also can receive the conviction of the Holy Spirit and be, be saved. Uh, so what makes some of them unable to be penetrated by this uh, truth of the Word and of the Spirit. Jesus did demonstrate in His ministry that the worst kind of people were not the sinners. The worst kind of people were the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. Mainly because the Pharisees think that they are superior to others and that uh, they are better than others and that they already know the truth. So unbelief is something that prevents the Holy Spirit from working. Unbelief to me is the greatest sin. Pride of the Pharisees too. So unbelief is a phenomenon which prevents the Holy Spirit from working. As we found in Mark chapter 6. The people in his hometown didn't believe. And Jesus even marveled. Wow, their unbelief can reach that level where they won't even listen to him or his words. He marveled at their unbelief and he did say <coughs> he couldn't do mighty signs and wonders. He only laid hands on a few people and healed them. So it did prevent the power of God from working. And I think unbelief is not non-belief. Unbelief is a free choice to choose to believe the wrong things. And once someone locked their belief in the wrong thing, even the Holy Spirit needs to respect that free choice.
as a request here for prayer. Father, we just pray for this individual, Justin, and bless him as he reached 33 years of age, and may he yield to your Holy Spirit and grow in the knowledge of Jesus. Amen. In that context, maybe I should just read Mark 6, that the reaction of Jesus in his own hometown, in verse 5, Mark 6. He could do no mighty work there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about the villages and circuit teaching. So he marveled. He was astonished. Uh, the word is taumazo, uh, to marvel, to, to wonder at such unbelief. Of course, the other time that he healed a sick person was uh, Marcus, the high priest servant. His, his ear got chopped off and he healed. He was in an atmosphere that no one was asking for healing. But he still could heal. That's, to me, that's, that's something very powerful about Jesus. He can heal in every situation. And of course, today we live in a, in a society that is the unbelief. So they don't even believe in the spiritual world. And they don't even believe in a real Jesus of Nazareth. They don't even believe the Bible. Mm -hmm. So we actually are confronted with a lot of unbelief in our modern generation. But yet, in this generation, in the days of the Tantos, we will demonstrate the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. As this question, uh, Sir, the popularity of the Lord Jesus grew mainly because of his healing ministry and miracles. Do you think this should be the pattern of all churches on earth today? To grow her membership through the broadcast of the healing miracles that happen in their midst. Also, would COG super grow happen when your healing ministry gets broadcasted worldwide? The answer is yes to both questions. The world, though it may be where it is, but a lot of people are sick, a lot of people are dying, a lot of people are, are uncured in spite of technology. And a lot of people are hungry for a real God who can demonstrate power. So when power is demonstrated, which is why in our days the devil also will do lying signs and wonders, people are so hungry for signs and wonders and they will always be there in any generation. So these people will quickly turn to God when they see the God intervening in great signs and wonders. And throughout the whole Bible, it's the same thing. In Jesus' ministry, it's the signs and wonders that attract the multitudes. And of course, Jesus tried to turn their attention away from it by teaching them. Uh, but it's natural for these people to seek after signs and wonders and to seek after the power of God that can heal them. So it is still the main thing. In any place, in any church, where signs and wonders are demonstrated, there will be multitudes. Because people want to be healed. In spite of our great uh, amount of science and medicine that have helped a lot of people, there are still more sick people then we can help. And so, signs and wonders will indeed be the reason why there are multitudes. So, Pastor, in uh, analyzing the case of the Marcus, you know, the year healing. Uh, in that atmosphere, um, there is no uh, supporting faith atmosphere. Of yes. But uh, Jesus does not need that. Even without a supporting faith atmosphere of belief, Jesus can perform healing. Yes. But then when he was at this place where the people had unbelief, then 
uh, he said he could not perform many mighty. Mi- mighty miracles. So the unbelief is not just a neutral uh, atmosphere. It is a negative faith. Yes. It's a, it's a counter faith. It's a demonic opposition yes. to God's spirit and God's work. Yes. So it means that if there is a place that has, or people have unbelief, that means there is a spiritual uh, counter force to uh, faith, then the strong man has to be bound first, as you, yes. you thought, right? And as yes. the Bible says, the strong man has to be bound first so that this counter belief is restrained, then we can uh allow the miracles and the move of God to be demonstrated. Amen. Amen to that. Mm-hmm. And in the case of Marcus, it was just a simple healing. He didn't do signs and wonders. In Mark 6, he mentioned he could not do mighty miracles, which probably he wanted to do so, if it were possible. Mm-hmm. And But he did say he still healed a few people. So, Somehow or other, uh, some healing still can take place, no matter how uh, much unbelief was there, and that was good. But it did prevent mighty miracles. Mm. So Malchus healing, or probably to Jesus, was a simple healing. And he could still do that in spite of all the uh, anti-counter uh, environment that he was in. Mm. So, Pastor, in this modern time, uh, we see more and more like uh, very uh, anti-Christian type of uh, behavior. Is that a unbelieving type of spirit that, in a way, uh, counter uh, what God wants to do? In let's say, uh, I mean, like we want to uh, do an atmosphere, uh, I mean, do a, uh, a miracle, then this uh, anti Christian type of thinking could be a difference, definitely. Mm. Yes, it's something that I believe the devil is behind it, it's stirring the spirit of strife and unbelief. and there need to be those of us, though we be few, to keep stirring the spirit of faith and truth. Mm. The sad thing is in many churches today, the spirit of unbelief has taken over. And yet I'm sure there's a core group who still believe in God, believe in science and wonders. And of course, I respect all the technology and discovery and medicine and science that has been brought forth, sometimes with great difficulty even by the scientists and the people who discover them, who respect them. But despite all that they do, we still believe in signs and wonders. And there is a place for signs and wonders in our belief of system so that God can do mighty signs and wonders. Mm. Well, it's been good discussion. Any more questions? and? Queries and I pray that after today that something in our thinking change, something in the way we believe change, where we keep believing in uh, natural things, we should believe more in 
the God of miracles, a Father God who bring miracles and Jesus who bring miracles. We should believe that. Mm, there's a question coming out. How much of familiarity breeds contempt leads to unbelief compared to the pride of the Pharisees? It makes sense. Yes, I understand the question. Mark chapter 6. The people in his hometown did not believe because they were too familiar with Jesus. They see him as a boy. They see him grow up. They seen him as a normal person for 30 years. And that familiarity prevents them to believe that he is the Messiah. So the question is, how can this boy who come from my village be the Messiah? And that unbelief and familiarity uh, was at the root of why the hometown of Jesus is the last place that will believe in him. Or other places he do signs and wonders, they straight away believe. This uh, hometown familiarity. Remember what they were saying? Is he not the brother of uh, some of the, uh, the wives or sisters whom they have met? Is he not the brother of so and so and so and so? They keep asking natural questions and it prevented them from seeing Jesus as a Messiah. So familiarity did prevent them from doing so. Familiarity also caused the sons of Aaron to die because they treat the holiness of God uh, without respect and they put strange fire on the altar. That means fire that is not proper from the proper place and they died. So this uh, uh, reduction of the holy into things that people are too familiar with can also be a hindrance. We need to always keep our faith up there in God. Well, from today's word, let's change our thinking. Uh, believe more in the supernatural and believe in the duty uh, or command that has been given to us to do signs and wonders and pray into it, believe into it and the day will come that we will demonstrate signs and wonders upon the earth in the way that the world finds it so hard to understand. But we will do it because we believe it. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you for your word. Let your word renew our heart, our mind, our thinking. We apologize. We repent for the lack of faith, the lack of a belief system, the lack of a simple trust in your power, in your word. Even in all the things we see on the earth, help us to have faith beyond what is normally possible. Help our faith to be that of sons of God who believe in their Father, believe that the power of the Spirit is there, to believe in miracles. You are a God of miracles that surpass the elementary principles of this earth. And we have you as our Father. You are indeed God and Father. And you're the God of miracles, signs and wonders. So we choose to believe in signs and wonders. We choose to believe in the miraculous. We choose to believe that the miraculous is our normal flow. Thank you, Father. Let your word be extolled. Let your name be worshipped and cause us to rise to a higher level of faith, a higher level of belief system, and a higher level of renewal of the mind. Thank you, Father, that whatever comes, whatever may, 
the works of Jesus and the greater works of Jesus will be done and demonstrated upon this earth that truly Jesus is the Christ, the Savior of the world. And upon his name, every authority and power shall be submitted to. Thank you, Father. Your word is true. We believe it. And we give you all the glory, praise, and honor, and worship. In Jesus' name, amen.